Good morning, students. I'm Dr. Monica Khetrapal. I'm Associate Professor of Physics in Government Dungar College, Bikaner. In my lecture series of Classical Mechanics, today I will deliver my lecture on Lagrangian for a charged particle in an electromagnetic field. Since we know in an electromagnetic field, there will be two forces acting on the particle. First will be the force due to electric field. And secondly, there will be a force due to magnetic field. This force is termed as Lorentz force. I am taking the particle which is having charge Q. Force acting on this particle will be QE plus 1 by C V cross B. Here I have written this force in electrostatic units. E being the strength of electric field and B is the strength of magnetic field. Since we know that electric and magnetic field, they can be expressed in terms of scalar and vector potential. So I am rewriting my Lorentz force in terms of vector potential A and scalar potential phi. Since B is curl of A and electric field E is minus grad phi minus 1 by C del A upon del T. The value of my Lorentz force becomes F is equal to Q minus del phi minus 1 by C del A upon del T plus 1 upon C B cross in spite of B I have written del cross A. Now this Lorentz force equation I am rewriting this expression for simplicity in only one Cartesian coordinate. Here I have taken only x component. So I will solve this equation one of force for only x component. The first term del phi its x component means del phi upon del phi upon del by del x. Now I have to write x component of this expression. For this I must know del cross A. What does curl of A means? This is the definition of curl of A. Now to determine the x component of V cross del cross A, I am writing it in a matrix form V cross del cross A. This is expressed by this expression. X component will be Vy multiplied by del cross A Z component minus Vz del cross A Y component. From here I can derive the Z and Y component of del cross A. The Z component of del cross A will be del Ay upon del X minus del ax upon del y. This is expressed here minus vz and similarly the y component of del cross a has been written. Opening the brackets I get the expression these four terms. Now in this expression I have differential with respect to x. There are two terms. The first term contains Vy and another term contains Vz. In Cartesian coordinates, there are three components x, y, z. So only one component that is x component is missing. So I am adding and subtracting it. I have added the term Vx del Ax upon del x and the same term is subtracted. I am rewriting this expression by collecting the terms which have del by del x in them. So Vx del x Ax upon del x and this term and the last term they 
all are put on in one single bracket. The remaining terms are this I have added, so I am subtracting it minus vx del ax upon del x. The other two terms vy del ax upon del y and vz del ax upon del z. This is the differential with respect to x. So I can express it as del by del x v dot a. Now, this is a very complicated expression. So we have to solve this expression. To simplify this expression, I am finding the total derivative of ax with respect to t. Since ax depends upon coordinates and t, I am writing dx upon dt in terms of partial derivative. So, firstly, expressing in terms of time derivative, I get del ax upon del t. Then, with respect to x, del ax upon del x dx upon dt plus del ax upon del y dy upon dt plus del ax upon del z dz upon dt. Here dx upon dt, this is the velocity in x direction. Similarly, dy upon dt is vy and dz upon dt is vz. So from this expression, I get the term dx upon dt minus del ax upon dt to be equal to vx del ax upon x plus vy del ax upon del y plus vz del ax upon del z. This term is same as expressed in equation 2. So in spite of this term in equation 2, I am writing it as dx upon dt minus partial derivative with respect to t of ax. This is the term I get. The x component of the Lorentz force, I find out the value of x component of v cross del cross a. So I am rewriting my equation 1 as x component to be equal to f is equal to q minus del phi by del x minus 1 upon c x component of vector a is ax del ax upon del t and i have find the x component of this term as del by del x v dot a minus dx upon dt plus partial derivative with respect to t of ax so the force becomes minus del by del x there are two terms of del by del x first is scalar potential phi another is minus 1 by c v v dot a the remaining term is minus 1 by c dx upon dt now what i am doing is i am making these two terms to be similar so to make them similar i am writing my ax as del vx v dot a what does it means i am differentiating v dot a what does v dot a means vx ax plus vy ay plus vz az i am differentiating it with respect to vx so i will simply get ax so expressing ax to be equal to del by del vx minus i get the term v dot a i have taken negative this sign inside so i writing i am writing it as minus v dot a and c is also written inside the bracket as 1 upon c. Now for making them similar, since this term contain phi and this term does not contain phi, and since phi is a scalar potential, it is independent of velocity, so its differential with respect to velocity will be zero. So adding this term will make no difference. That means adding a zero term, it will make no difference in this expression. So this term, del by del vx minus v dot a upon c, 
it can be written as del by del vx phi minus v dot a upon c. The Lorentz force x component becomes here minus del by del x phi minus 1 upon c v dot a plus d by dt differential with respect to vx phi minus v dot a upon c. Since vx is x dot, I have written in this expression vx as x dot. Now, I am putting phi minus 1 upon c v dot a, this to be u. So, the Lorentz force component, x component becomes fx is equal to minus del u by del x plus d by dt del u upon del x dot. So here I have this term velocity. As the force acting on the particle depends on the velocity of the particle. Potential energy includes the term V. That means potential energy is velocity dependent. So this is an example of non-conservative system. In my earlier examples, which, are, which were discussed in my earlier lectures, all the systems I have considered were conservative in nature. So Lagrangian for a particle which is moving in an electromagnetic field, this is an example of non-conservative system. So for solving the Lagrangian equation of motion, since the system is non-conservative, we have to solve the general form of Lagrangian equation of motion. And we know that general form is d by dt del t by del qj dot minus del t upon del qj. This is equal to capital qj. This is the generalized force. We have determined our force, the x component of the force. I am using that force, x component force. I am expressing this force in the form of generalized coordinate. That means instead of x, I am writing qj. So here qj becomes minus del u by del qj plus d by dt du upon d qj dot. Now I am taking the terms which are similar d by dt del by del qj dot here t here minus u. Similarly, these two terms are similar. That means derivative with respect to qj. I got the expression. Since kinetic energy minus potential energy, it is equal to Lagrangian of the system. So I get d by dt del L by del qj dot minus del L by del qj equal to zero. This is the Lagrangian equation of motion. But here the difference is that here the Lagrangian includes potential energy which is dependent upon velocity. For a conservative system, potential energy only depends upon the distance of the particle. It does not depend upon the velocity of the system. So when we are taking a problem of Lagrangian of a charged particle which is moving in an electric field. This is a problem of non-conservative system. I hope students, you must have understood what I taught today. Thank you for watching.